Oh, don't drop it. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, we come to our third round, which is about well-established German enterprises willing to cooperate with the African startups. All of them already are active in, in Africa and do have acceleration programs. And I uh, would like to welcome up here on stage right now Bruno Gutierre, Munyaratsi Chivasa, I hope this is the right pronunciation, Michael Pittelko, which is much easier, <laughs> and Sabine Dalomo. This is your applause. Was that right, the pronunciation? More or less. <laughs> um, Bruno, bonsoir. <laughs> um, you are from Airbus, Europe's biggest aeronautic company, and um, Airbus Biz Lab. This is where ideas take off. Is that right? Yeah, some of them at least. Uh, uh, well, this is the uh, aerospace accelerator that uh, we have created uh, something like uh, three years ago. Uh, the first one in Toulouse, and now uh, we've got one in Hamburg and the uh, third one in Bangalore. And very soon, because this is brand new, we have taken the decision two days ago, uh, we will have a fourth one in Madrid. Mm -hmm. And you are willing to cooperate with Africa even more. So please go ahead. The stage is yours. Thank you. <laughs> so now it's time. Uh, it's the time for the, the big elephant after the, the agile uh, spring box. Uh, so I'm Bruno Gutierre from Airbus, and uh, uh, I said I founded and I'm now managing the Airbus Space Lab, which are a, uh, uh, a startup accelerator from Airbus. So like any uh, corporate accelerator, we are hosting and supporting the development of uh, startup, which uh, provide uh, value uh, for the aerospace domain. So that doesn't mean that they are systematically working in the aerospace domain, but uh, we consider that the innovation they are bringing can bring uh, some value for, uh, for Airbus. So we have a six month acceleration program and uh, uh, we are hosting something like uh, 20 startups on, uh, on our platform actually. Our program is a little bit unique in the sense that in the same time we are hosting as well intrapreneur, that means uh, Airbus collaborators and we give them the chance uh, to come into our platform and to develop their uh, innovation in a startup mode. That's what we are doing in our three platform uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, now, uh, why Airbus wants to work uh, uh, with African startup? That's a good question. Uh, let's consider Airbus not only as an aircraft manufacturer, but as well as a mobility service provider. We are developing drones. We are developing autonomous vehicles. So we are a mobility provider. Let's consider us as well as a IoT and imagery satellite service provider. We are working with farmers in agriculture. We are working uh, in uh, uh, city management domain. We are working with uh, um, people fighting deforestation, as an example. So we are, we are pro service provider. And you see now probably the link with some of the project which has been presented before. This is exactly what we are looking for by starting, because we are just at the beginning of our initiative in Africa, starting this initiative in Africa, this is exactly what we are looking for, trying to help to support African startups. Africa doesn't need for ideas. They are not looking for ideas. They are not looking for bright people. You have seen them on stage. What they are looking for sometimes it's technical support, technology transfer, and some money sometimes as well. <laughs> and that's exactly what we will aim to do 
That means coming, helping them in order to develop their innovation, in order to develop their concept. We have the ambition to support the blooming of a new generation of African entrepreneur in aerospace. That's what we would like to do. And to do so, we have to start, and we have to start slowly. We have started by, maybe I missed the, yeah. Excuse me. No, that's okay. We have, we have started by launching a challenge, Africa for Future. And because we didn't know anything about the African startup ecosystem, uh, we have asked the support of uh, two big accelerators in Africa, uh, led by two amazing women, one in Cape Town, Hélène Fichat, and the second one in uh, Nairobi, Juliana Rotish. And thanks to, and thanks to them, and thank, thanks to this partnership, we have been in contact with more than 300 AI technology startups. I can tell you that, that I have seen amazing, amazing pitches. Bright ideas, amazing, amazing pitches. On these 300, we have selected two of them. One in South Africa, another one in, uh, in Nairobi. Why only two? Just because we are in a learning process. We really want first to understand what are the needs? How we can support them? It's serious. We are talking with entrepreneurs. They have put all their life on the table. It's not because we are a big company that we should consider them as a small enterprise, small company. We want to start a win-win situation. So we want to take care of them and to be sure that we will be able to support them till the mar their market success. And this is the reason why we have limited our support to two only at the moment. Uh, one is called Cargo Note in, uh, in Cape Town. They are developing an uh, airship drone in order to deliver on a long distance big shipment in order to reach isolated village, isolated uh, uh, people. So we will help them to develop their airship. And the second one is uh, aluminum greenhouse. They have developed a very specific, uh, um, how can I say that? Uh, small houses connected in order to protect uh, the plant for the farmers. All these greenhouses are fully connected and automatized. And that's what is of interest for us. We, we're gonna help them to uh, improve the automatization. That's basically the idea. So we will give the opportunity to these uh, two startups to come in Europe to have a two weeks immersive journey with our experts and then obviously to come back uh, in Africa in order to uh, develop their, uh, their bright ideas. We will still continue to support them obviously. Uh, by the way, When is the next chart, chance? <laughs> that's, that's, that's a good question. Uh, and I will conclude on that one. To be honest, we are, as I said, in a learning process. What we're going to do afterwards, I don't know. It will depend of what we're going to learn by working with them. And uh, there is only one thing that I can tell you, is that in 2018, we will be back in Africa, that's for sure. To do what? I don't know, but I'm sure we will be back. <laughs> and maybe tonight already. You have the big chance. And we continue with Munyarazi Chivasa. He is head of accelerator, accelerator program from Merck, which is a big German chemical, pharmaceutical, and life sciences company. Go ahead, please. Well, thank you very much. Um, uh, so, yeah, so. My name is Munya. I am uh, part of the Innovation Center at Merck. 
Uh, I'm heading the Accelerator program, as already mentioned, and I'm very, very happy. Thank you very much for giving uh, Merck the actual title that it is. So many people assume that we're just a pharmaceutical company operating in healthcare, but we are a bit more than that. So we have life science, we have performance materials. Uh, so in the life science side of the business, we are looking at uh, providing reagents and tools for uh, biotech uh, and, uh, and life science um, uh, industry. Uh, for the performance materials, we're doing some high-tech specialty chemicals. For instance, we are the largest suppliers for uh, liquid crystals, uh, for display technologies. Uh, so this is something that many people don't, don't realize. Um, what we currently do uh, within the Innovation Center, so I'll just start off by telling you a bit more about the main division that runs the Accelerator program. We connect not only with startups through the Accelerator program, but we also support and incubate entrepreneurs within the company. So we look for ideas that are beyond, um, so between and beyond the business sectors that I just explained, so the healthcare, the life science and performance materials. We have a great, great, great role within the company. This is looking at what Merck can do in the future, looking beyond what's currently uh, going on in the company and thinking uh, beyond our own borders, so beyond our technology silos, um, uh, and, and looking outside. So I'm gonna talk a bit more uh, for the rest of the session about our accelerator program. Um, so the team for the Accelerator program is looking externally, connecting the external world uh, to Merck. So bringing in ideas, uh, collaborators, technologies that might be interesting to, to, to transform the current Merck businesses or work with uh, entrepreneurs that we uh, support within the Innovation Center. So the Innovation Center is based in Darmstadt, which is the headquarters, but we run an Accelerator program out of Darmstadt and Nairobi. Um, just to give you an insight about what we actually do, uh, so we have a, you know, a standard uh, corporate accelerator program, uh, sort of looking for, 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 for ideas within the, 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 the subject areas and in industries that Merck is currently operating in. In Nairobi, we focus mostly on healthcare at the moment. Um, we shortlist the startups and scout uh, through partners and through our, uh, through, through our networks. Uh, once they're in the program, we run them for three months, uh, providing them with funding, uh, networking, mentorship, um, as well as the opportunity to potentially collaborate with Merck at the end. Uh, so we, we can collaborate through funding via our Merck Ventures. Uh, they could actually integrate their technologies within some of our, um, uh, our existing businesses um, and uh, uh, potentially even work with some of the entrepreneurs within the company. Uh, apart from that, we also try to spur um, innovation and entrepreneurship within people who might have uh, great ideas. So we run hackathons um, uh, that with, the, with a view of actually building up companies uh, from, from startups that will participate in these hackathons. So we've, we've, had, uh, we've run a hackathon in Accra in Ghana last year, uh, and through that we had three teams uh, that actually became sort of incorporated and worked in our uh, incubation space in, in Accra at the Impact Hub with our partners. We also run a virtual challenge. Uh, so this is sort of like a, a, a hackathon, but done online uh, over a longer period of time, uh, trying to, to, to sort of connect uh, other people who can't come to the locations that we run our actual hackathons. The winners tend, get to come to the Innovation Summit and where we provide them with further uh, support, so we sort of run a small boot camp over one day. Uh, we're running our next, uh, or first Cross Innovation Summit in Dubai next month, um, and we're hoping to, to, to get very good teams that would actually connect with the Accelerator program in the future. Um, just to give you a better in, insight about what we've actually done in the past, so we've been running this program since uh, April 2016, and we've already interacted with quite a few startups. Um, so I'm just gonna run it through uh, um, in, a, in, a, in a way that we, we approach uh, access to health at Merck. So we have four A's uh, to access to health. So we have availability, uh, affordability, accessibility, and awareness. Um, in the portfolio, we currently have uh, Matibabu, a Ugandan startup uh, that actually ran through the program in, 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 in Darmstadt, uh, providing an, an, uh, a, a, an amazing solution that will make malaria diagnosis non-invasive. So you don't have to actually take a blood sample. Um, we also have uh, teams that are working on, on pricing transparency within, within, within the, the, the medicine, um, medical and healthcare uh, value chain. Uh, we have teams that are working on emergency response systems. Uh, the supply chain is being secured by some of these startups. I'm gonna talk a bit about SDK after, uh, after I, I, I finish with the other teams. So we also have a team called Wealthy uh, from India. Uh, one of the, the things that we've, we have seen over the past three years, two years that we've been running this program is that all the teams, 
Unfortunately, that's gone awry on the on the fridge. So a bit of a bit over a quarter of the startups that have been with the program are coming from Kenya. Uh, the rest of them are coming from all over the world. So this is one of the insights I wanted to give here, but unfortunately, something's gone wrong with the, the presentation here. So just to give an example of what happens with the teams that work with us. So SDK is a team that um, that has been in the past accelerator program. They've managed to partner with Merck. Uh, Merck is working on uh, uh, tackling some of the non-tropical, non-neglected tropical diseases um, that we find in the world. One of them is Bilhazia. Uh, we provide a donation of several million uh, tablets of Prasequantil each year. Uh, our challenge has been uh, that we haven't been able to track it beyond the point where it reaches port. So the tablets are, uh, are manufactured in Mexico uh, and dropped off uh, at a port uh, with the ministries and then local partners then transport them uh, throughout the organizations to the places where they are needed the most. Um, SDK has managed to help us track uh, at the end of the value chain. Uh, we actually had our um, manager of the accelerator program as part of the team developing this pilot in Kenya. Uh, we had uh, a success in tracking when the tablets are actually taken with teachers who have my apologies. Uh, so I've been told by our, <laughs> uh, our, our downstream representative to, to, to speed it up. Um, but the, 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 part, the part of what we actually are also doing is promoting ecosystem development within the continent. So we've been running a series of e-health meetups connecting other, uh, to other ecosystems besides just Nairobi. Um, we also want to use this as a stepping stone to go beyond just Nairobi and provide uh, an acceleration program also in places like South Africa, uh, Accra, Nigeria, as well as Tunis. Um, and what we want to do is go beyond health. So if there are any people who want to interact with us a bit more in Africa, uh, we were talking to the Make It Alliance just recently, uh, as in before this talk, and I think we're going to partner with them next year as well. Uh, please let us know, come to our stand and talk to us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Almost five minutes, almost. <laughs> and we go on with, uh, yeah, the, the, one of the world's leading software producers, SAP. Please welcome Michael Pittelkov, your general manager, Public Services Africa. And uh, yeah, we're curious to hear about your, your uh, impression, how, why Africa is ready to collaborate with, with SAP. Even more, maybe, than ready. Perfect. I think it's the other way around. Why are we ready to collaborate with exactly. Africa? Exactly. That's, that's what it's all about. And uh, yeah, if you allow me to, to just give my pitch. Please, the stage is yours. Thank Go you ahead. so much. Um, yeah, being cognizant of time, you might see me now becoming a disc jock, uh, a slide jockey, and going a bit faster through the slides. Um, yeah, F SAP. SAP is a well-known European brand, but what you might probably not know is how present we are in Africa. And you can see here that our uh, that we have approximately 500 partners in 20 countries. We employ around about 700 people, and the rule of thumb is that five times the uh, employees are generated in our partner ecosystem. So we are relevant. And as as you rightly said, I am. One of my roles is being general manager of public services in Africa, so I'm a proud member of SAP Africa, even though that I'm based in Germany. And every day that I'm in Africa, and I spend approximately three weeks a month on the continent, and I'm not talking, with all the respect, not talking South Africa only, but also the more challenging places uh, in, in Africa. And I see amazing talent, as I've seen here today. And now you might raise the question, isn't that a challenge to SAP? I'm the dinosaur in IT and all these speedboats around us. No, actually, it's, it's the perfect storm to team up. And uh, we have a lot of things we do for our partners, for startups, and I've chosen one of those to share with you, which is our SAP Startup Focus Program. It's a global program. That means it's also valid in Africa. Um, and it targets any startup that is in the space of big data, predictive, real-time analytics, and we've seen a lot of that here today, tonight. Um, and the idea is that these startups, or let's say scale-ups, so companies already a little bit in business with a viable uh, model, develop new applications on SAP, HANA, HCP, apologies for that Sapanese, it's just a technical platform. Um, 
And this is not only to provide those startups, you and your, uh, your colleagues in Africa, with a technology, it's also to give you uh, market traction, because we, all, we have approximately 335,000 customers, might be more, this figure is a couple of days old, and uh, the unique element of this is we give you not only technology, we give you access. So we're doing this um, in partnership we, because we firmly believe in the intelligence of the crowd. We firmly believe, me from an Africa's point of view, that the right solutions for Africa are being developed in Africa by Africans, in not in Berlin or Washington DC or you name it, because you know the challenges. Minister, you have mentioned um, M-Pesa, something never being invented here, but uh, a special problem. That's now I've seen from Sparkasse, that's a German bank, they do the same. So we are the followers. And um, that's why we have approximately engaged with, let's say, 5,700 startups, give and take, um, so far. And 950 of those have entered the program and develop on our technology. And this led already to 200, more than 270 what we call minimal, minimal viable products, so things that can be sold on the market. 200 customer deals. So what is it that we offer to, to startups? And by the way, not only African startups, it's a global program, so German startups are welcome of, as well, of course. Access to technology, leading edge technology, we believe, to resources, and for free. No equity, no money, nothing, for free. Secondly, access to resources. We assign SAP architects, distinguished architects, to a startup to help develop based on the technology for free. No equity, no money, nothing. And this is what makes it unique. We give access to our customer base. So Moses, you have uh, pitched uh, the Agri platform in Ghana. We have customers in Agri. To make it concrete, if Moses would decide to enter this platform, and to, to, and to uh, work with us in the Startup Focus program, that would also lead to access to our customer base in agriculture and everything that might be relevant. So that's something very unique, what we do here. Um, we have a venture community. We ourselves, we don't invest uh, out of pocket. We don't want a share of the company. But if you need money to make it happen, we have a, we have a uh, community. Again, no cost, no fees, no equity. And uh, we offer joining a community. How does it work? It's a three-layer three process. Engage. We target startups that are predominant in the business-to-business business. business. What a word, business-to-business business, business. Um, because that's our area of, um, of expertise. In the second phase, we enable, and then we help to sell. And only if the startups have sold their product then there is some money flowing into SAP. So it's a win-win. Once you're successful, we join you. If you're not becoming successful, it's also our risk. We think this is a really fair model that we have here. Um, I'll, as I said, I'm con cognizant of the time, so let's skip it. Um, you've asked how often you can apply. You can apply anytime. Any time. It's a vir complete virtual pro program, so not only for the typical suspects as there are Nigeria, Kenya, South Africa. You can sit in Mali, in Malawi, in Mozambique, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's completely virtual. But if you prefer to have an on site, uh, on -site con point of contact, it's of course on the one hand our offices. You've seen the map, we are pretty present. But uh, I'm very happy to also mention that we partner with the German government under the Make IT program, and there are two desk offices now being established in Nairobi and Kenya, so you can use that as well. So, as I said, I think it's a perfect, uh, perfect offering. We're really happy to partner with startups. We have done so before, and we would like to continue the journey with African startups as well. Thank you. And we come to our last presentation for today. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome from Siemens, Rita Nkulu. Thank you. Is that right? I think in the interest of time, we're not going to play the video. So please don't rush too much. So I'm Rita Nkulu. I'm an executive director at Siemens, um, Southern Africa. So responsible for Sub-Saharan Africa. So Bina sends her apologies. She had to go to Botswana. She has a meeting there tomorrow morning um, with the Ministry of Energy in Botswana. So she had to catch on a flight um, tonight to get to Berlin and then to Frankfurt. So, but um, it's, um, 
actually a presentation that I'm very, very familiar with because that's my job, uh, business excellence. So I'm going to run straight into it. Here you see um, how we are represented in, um, in Africa itself. Um, the green parts are the um, Anglophone countries. I'm responsible for those in terms of um, governance, corporate governance, quality assurance, um, as well as then making sure that we have localization in the country that we're in. So we firmly believe that where we have a footprint, we must leave a legacy behind. And the legacy that we normally need to leave behind is not only skills development, but really and truly what we know as um, economic development. So um, the likes of, I think it is Jörg, no? um, you can see the green part. We still have quite a few places to go to, and I'm always looking for you know, um, real talents that um, are from Africa who want to return to Africa. So please do contact me as far as that is concerned. Then um, moving on, how long have we been in Africa or in South Africa? Yeah, it's 157 years later. So um, Siemens, this actually was the first um, regional company that, um, that the second regional company that was established in South Africa, starting off in Cape Town, Simonstown, um, the telegraph system that was installed there, all the way up to, and we are, we are very much involved in power generation, energy management, as well as then the healthcare um, environment. Um, running right through it, what is our, what is our credo? What do we live by? We make real what matters. And what matters really and truly is all about economic growth, then education, health, and of course compliance. We do business in a compliant manner. Um, in, in terms of local country laws. So um, when we go on, so this is South Africa, you'll see the uh, provinces, and um, on a daily basis, on a monthly basis, on a yearly basis, we track exactly what we're doing in the areas um, where we're in. So as a company, um, we normally are engaging in large infrastructure projects. So therefore, what that requires is for us to also have local companies who are, who are supporting us with that. So going right through, what do we do in terms of our impact now in South Africa, as an example? Um, there you'll see that um, we're spending approximately um, 390 million euros um, per annum, roughly, um, on local companies, so procuring locally, but then we also focus on SMMEs. And that is an important aspect for us because um, it's SMMEs that provide the agility and the support that we require out in the sticks where we find ourselves on infrastructure projects. Then um, going on in terms of skills development, very important regional um, companies tend to not do R&D in, 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 in the actual country, but rather in, um, in, in the likes of Germany, in the US, and so on. So the skills transfer still has to take place inside the country. And there, again, we spend quite um, a substantial amount of money on ensuring that we do, in fact, leave a legacy of skills behind in the form of we do not maintain necessarily our own systems, um, that the maintenance is done by local companies. Then I go again in terms of um, supporting transformation, and transformation meaning that there needs to be a lot more power to the smaller um, SMMEs. We also engage um, in terms of supplier development as well as enterprise development. So supplier development, of course, are suppliers in our value chain, but then also enterprise development, those um, entrepreneurs that are looking to come into our supply chain, we need to upgrade them, we need to upscale them. And one of the main things that we um, look at literally, let me just wait here, is um, in terms of our supplier development is really in um, ISO certification. It's a huge barrier for an OEM why we demand and we require that our suppliers are ISO certified. So ISO 9000 to the 2015 standard, the um, occupational health and safety standard, as well as the environmental standard. And we provide that to our suppliers. So we bring them on board. You have talent. You can do things. Now let us also make sure that you're certified against the standards that we required. So this is something that we actively engage in. Another area that I'd like to um, point out then here is, in fact, um, a, a as business excellence, we also make sure that our various um, companies that we have in, in, in the various countries that we have, that we have a common methodology towards um, business as we find it. 
So in this case, we are talking about um, lean management. So is it lean factories? Is it lean suppliers? Is it Siemens lean production systems? We also provide exactly the same training to our suppliers. Of course, in many cases on a lower scale, but that at least makes sure that from a procurement perspective, when we talk about uh, PVO, when we talk about reordering points, our suppliers understand it because they have been trained to the same standard that we as regional companies are being trained at. So very, very important for us here is the lean service, as I said, um, the setup of being lean, so no wastage um, and making sure that things happen in time, just like we would expect from ourselves as Siemens, we also make sure our suppliers do that. So the, the lean and the after sales service is to us the most important because again, what does it speak to economic development on an ongoing and a sustainable basis? So here are some examples of um, supplier um, um, pre-assemblies that we've done where our suppliers were able to really bring in the, um, the, the, the efficiencies and the time um, lower than we had originally expected, and therefore they remain with us as they are. Now, what is next now? What is next for us is very, very simple. We are talking about... Um, the African Digitalization uh, Maturity Report. And I've spoken about us as, as Siemens developing suppliers and enterprises ourselves. So now what we are looking for is really in the digital space, we're not going to catch up on that necessarily. We know what the solution is. What we need is the interim, the entrepreneurs that are going to provide us with the interim services. That is our pitch to, our, um, to the entrepreneurs. By the way, we know that cream rises to the top. Vera is a supplier of ours already. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Rita. Thank you very much. So I think, uh, thank you very much for your um, presentations. I think uh, people will run to you right now. But you guys too, you have seen, you have learned a lot uh, tonight. Do you already have uh, any potential partners in mind? Three to four. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, you do have. Okay, so we are very curious uh, to see your conversations right now after the, the official part up here on stage. But first, uh, let me ask if there are any further questions. Uh, okay, so this is your applause and thank you very much. And um, yeah, th ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for your attention. You've been a wonderful audience. Thank you, Minister Tsipris and Melanie Hawken for your great and powerful initiatives. I think this uh, will be and has already been a wonderful night with uh, big potential. And we have seen a lot of innovation tonight and uh, hardworking, diligent young people from both Africa and Germany. I think uh, this is worth a big, big applause. Thank you very much. I will cross my fingers for you guys. And I think, uh, I'm sure you will find wonderful partnerships. All the very best for you and good night, good evening. Enjoy our poster session and our catering, obviously. And enjoy the rest of the evening. Auf Wiedersehen, thank you. <laughs>